Welcome to Cookies, the basketball pod. I am Ben Dietrich. With me, as usual, barely awake, Jordan Ridelli. Good morning, man. Human lean in the flesh. Yeah. What's up? And who else is here? What's his name again? Andrew Quo. What's up? Is here. What's up? Went to sleep early last night, uh, inspired kind of by Jordan's current situation. I was like, I need to think about my sleep. What's going on, John? It's a little thing called uh, insomnia that I suffer from occasionally, like quite frequently, but for you know most of my life. So that's my sub story. Uh, so yeah, it sucks, man. Insomnia really sucks. We were meant to pod yesterday, but I didn't sleep at all, and that was not going to be an option. Uh, although I have taken naps on the show before, I feel like this would have been a one hour like you know like full full like you should have just painted like nap. open eyes on your eyelids oh and yeah I should like, have just, we can have bernie's guys... this shit man <laughs> <laughs> just snoring into the microphone so is there like a a medical solution for your insomniac ways can you just pop a pill and go to sleep or is that something you're avoiding i i, I avoid those because I'll go to sleep, but then I'll wake up feeling groggy and fucked up the next day. Like I, I, I like like a stoned over or something. Like I feel like shit if I take a pill the next day. So we all have our bouts with sleeplessness, uh-huh. and to me, that is very closely associated with a, a fine distilled existential dread. Is that something that you get to enjoy along with being really tired? Yeah. Well, the, the worst is like so. Yesterday, I don't know if anyone gives a shit about this. I don't really. They do. They, uh, so I had to do like a show on the lot radio from 10 to 12 and then cookies from one to three and then work from four to like whatever. And I couldn't get to sleep. How many of those things happened? One. I I just kept putting the others off so I could get rest. And so, yeah. I, and so the stress of being like, fuck, I've got to do this thing in two hours and I haven't been to sleep yet. And then I've got an hour in between that and something else where I have to talk about, what are we talking about? Lakers or some shit. And, yeah, yeah. And, and insomnia. And insomnia, yeah, yeah. yeah the and big so insomnia the, show is coming up and I can't get to so sleep. And then, yeah, exactly. And so that was, the, that was the stress. And it's always, and you know, like, you try and read and you're, you can't, and then you fucking try and watch something that you don't want to watch and then that stresses you out because it's awful. Because if you watch something that you like to get to sleep, you'll just end up finishing it. Have you ever tried Steve 1989? No, but you enjoy no, that too he's much. He's fucking awesome. Yeah, that's true. His palate is impeccable. <laughs> Weirdly, the thing that works the most is going for like like skateboarding. I will just go out for a little bit of a skateboard. Not that I'm a big skateboarder, but running like gets too much going. Skateboarding just makes you that little bit tired. Skateboarding, then watch tennis. The the like repetitiveness and the sound of the tennis ball being battered back to front is one of the things that works. It's kind of sports ASMR. Yeah, so if anyone has like, oh wow, I'm really old. I was going to see if anyone had a like a tennis DVD they could send me, but I could also just watch it on (laughs) YouTube. YouTube. Fuck! (laughs) All right, send the VHS tape and the Betamax. (laughs) Yeah, if anyone has uh, Sampras Agassi, it's really noble 1996. I'd really appreciate it. But I did watch something fun but not funny. It was the Comedy Central roast of uh, Bruce Willis. Oh, wait. I've seen that. I think it's That's pretty old, right? No, it's really new. Oh, okay. My bad. And so it's one of those depressing things where it's like, wow, Bruce Willis really isn't famous anymore. They couldn't get anyone to show up for it. Well, that's okay. Not having seen it or even being aware of it, maybe. Go on. Who would you put on that roast? Who would be, the, I mean, Demi Moore, obviously, his kids. Um, who else would you put... Um, uh, the bad guy from Die Hard 1. Oh, he's dead. Rest no, in peace. Not... Oh. He, he passed away, right? On screw, but I thought you meant the blonde one. The guy who, like, uh, who's the guy who, like did some people. lines and then yeah. betrayed him. I yeah. say get him roasting him. Oh, um, Mood Landing, um, Sybil Shepard has to be on there. She was on there. So was Demi. Oh, that's, that's a good roasting crew. Who was, who was bad on it? You have to have, like, that's who's could always you, Could on. you get Marlon Wayans there? Or was it Damon Wayans? 
Who was the one who was in uh, Last, Boy, Last Scout? Boy Scout? That was Damon, the, correct? Damon. Yeah. Damon. You'd think he'd be funny. But yeah. they had Edward Norton on it for some reason. Is it just someone they can get? I, I think maybe they're buds. Edward He's Norton. Not funny at all. Edward Norton, speaking of actors who have sort of disappeared, Edward Norton was like the artistic director du jour there for a while. And like, what does he do now? Well, there was some jokes levied at him about how no one wants to work with him. Apparently he's just a dick. But apparently he rewrites all of his roles. So I think the last, the, the, I heard the straw that broke that back was the Hulk. So he was just like kind of resisting the script, being like, I think this character is different. I would rewrite it. No, I don't think we're doing the right thing here. And they're just I like, don't think he guy. bursts out of his clothes. I don't think he gets mad. How come his pants size up with him? And then size the, down with him. And always the 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 joke, the right? mystery. I guess Can you imagine if they didn't, and then all of a sudden it was just his dong wrapped in like purple cloth. Well, they they made that joke in Rankarok, right? Oh, like when he finally shrinks, he's like got this huge like towel around his waist, and Hulk Hulk junk, Hulk junk. Yeah. The uh, the best was that Elite, Alita Battle Angel. The oh, I want to see that. Was that good? Oh no, I was very excited for it. And well, it was, to, can I before? Did you think Avatar was good? Not particularly. Okay. That's context a little bit. So you clearly did. I thought it was okay. I have, I'm have i kind of neutral about Avatar. I'll see the second one. The first one was cool because it was epic and I love sci-fi, but it was kind of like whatever. Yeah, this movie I was very excited about. The effects look good. I love Robert Rodriguez, the, the genius of the faculty and Spy Kids. Spy Kids is awesome. Spy Kids. So it ages good. well. Yes, and uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Johnny Depp's finest ever role. Oh. Um, so yeah, in Elite of Battle Angel, I'm getting to the point. This is what happens when you don't sleep. Uh, in, in Elite of Battle Angel, they, they, it, it sucks. The movie sucks, and it's clearly set up to feature, the second one's going to feature an arch villain. Um, is this shows a franchise? Up the, is, is there going to be three of them? Yeah, but not anymore because it tanked. Did it? Super tanked. Like oh, the Dream Team, James like, Cameron and Robert Rodriguez. Oh yeah, like done. Ooh. Uh, and they reveal the villain right at the very end in Who the last it? few frames. It's Edward Fucking Norton. God damn it! Sick. Oh, Norty's back. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> he was. Now he's not <laughs> again. People. Were I was because like, the voices throughout the film I was like, "Who the hell is that?" And then you saw like a glimpse of him. Like in a picture, and I was like, "That dude kind of looks like a like seven year old lesbian Edward Norton." And uh, guess what? It was. He's definitely someone that will more and more resemble a lesbian as he gets older. That that specific Porzingis. That <laughs> yes. definitely, yeah, definitely a sure. future lesbian. Edward Norton's interesting as a as a guy from the past, like an, a, a a washed actor, considering. If his downfall was being a dick, his entire gift was kind of likability. You yep. always liked him. And they used that in, what was it, The Good Son or whatever it was called? Or not The Good Son, whatever, the movie where he was like the killer and... Primal he, Fear. But he was like, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> he was so nice. That was his whole deal, that you couldn't believe he would be a, a, a murderer. And so that he, was the yeah. tension with American History X, right? It was like, oh, look at this fantastic guy, this tour de force of a performance. He's a jerk. But it turns out... <laughs> Turned out he's a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> like, with, a, with a pretty, pretty mean uh, pickup game. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Wait, so did they roast uh, Bruce Willis for his jazz record? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of... Lots of uh, Sybil Shepard made a nice joke about how she almost fucked Bruce Willis and then he whipped it out. His harmonica, of course. Burn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Got yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sybil. Oh, Hollywood. They're bringing... Speaking of Hollywood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you picked up what I put down. You put up the lob and I laid it in. <laughs> you, you, you reverse American History X dunked it. I curb stomped your segue, if you will. Uh, yes, the Lakers, a basketball team, are now in a different part of the season than they were the last time we spoke. We were looking at the but Lakers. So are all the teams. A fair point. But the Lakers specifically were an ethical team. 
a week or so ago. They were competing hard. They were trying to make the playoffs. Not shooting threes. <laughs> Completely ethical. <laughs> like, that was a virtuous <laughs> fucking squad right yeah. there. Now they're shifting to the Lakers that we're familiar with from the last five, six years. At the end of the season, they intentionally lose games. LeBron, suddenly on a minutes restriction. Ingram, perhaps a, a really bad injury, but he's out for the year. Lonzo has been declared out for the year. Andre Ingram is back on the roster. Who is just like the human like tanking torch. It's like, <laughs> yeah. put up the tanking symbol. It's like Andre Ingram, like the 40-year-old virgin has arrived. But oddly, he would have helped this team if they had him all throughout the year. <laughs> oh, they might be in the playoffs is, so if you're they had him. He's too good. <laughs> <laughs> right. They don't know how to tank well if they sign him. So now looking at the standings here on the site Tankathon, which is a handy resource for all of your tanking information. Is that a real needs. site? It's a good site, man. Yeah. Oh. There it is and, on your what computer. It, and it puts your standings up in reverse order. Instead of saying a game a team is two games behind first, it says that they are two and a half games behind the Knicks because the Knicks have the worst record in, in basketball. So it's Love an that. inverse standings based on ping pong balls. The Lakers right now are 30 and 36, which gives them a current 9.4% chance at a top four pick. But That's big. If they can lose a few games here, they have potentially a route to being like the eighth best or seventh best record because the Grizzlies, the Wiz, New Orleans, Charlotte are all kind of in that same vicinity. So if they can do that and lose those kind of games, they might get down to like a 37% chance at a top four pick. Okay, so let's say they wind out, or they, they wind up with R.J. Barrett or Cam or John Morant, right? It's hilarious because LeBron doesn't want to play with these guys. Like it's almost like a useless exercise, right? But it's an asset. A huge asset that you can get another player for. Um, agreed. But like it, it, this whole thing is broken. Like LeBron gifted his presence in L.A., his choice, but it happened, you know. And they did everything wrong afterwards. Um, Mo Wagner was kind of a good pick. <laughs> I mean, he's... Okay, like you could trade Wait, him. Is, is it Wagner or Wagner? I think it's Wagner. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, Mo I Wagner. Wagner. Yeah. That sounds like someone like on a Valkyrie. Yeah, Valkyrie 2, Mo Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like uh, Wagner 2. Wait, did you just say that? Yeah. <laughs> Holy Pro's shit. like, I've got a joke. Holy I've got yeah. something here. I blacked out for a second. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I don't know if you blacked out, I think you were just knocked out by my fantastic pun. <laughs> he was just reeling from, from the, the more Wagners. <laughs> I was like, make the joke. <laughs> Get some sleep, Quo. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, here's the question I ask you. This whole flattening of the lottery odds so that teams can quickly plunge from on the verge of the playoffs to potentially seventh, eighth, did this cure tanking or accelerate it? Accelerate it. Come on, this is the tanking golden age, right? You have all these teams losing on purpose. Uh, but the Knicks have like thirteen wins, maybe. Like, I mean, yeah, that's that's the problem. Like, there was a, a couple of teams like, all right, we're that bad, we might get now. Any, anyone who's like in the top ten, I guess, of the Tankathon, yeah. it's like shit. We have like a real shot at a top four pick here, and we predicted from, this from out of nowhere because the right because after the top four, which are flattened, at, I believe fourteen percent, it gets really tight. So there's a lot of movement. I mean, there's currently a. Three game difference between the team in sixth place, which is Dallas, who is feverishly tanking to try to move into the top five so that they can keep their own pick instead of giving it to who Atlanta. Who are openly into tanking. I mean, they're openly tanking. Yeah, yeah. And But anyway, there is a three game difference between Dallas at sixth and Orlando in 12th. There is fertile ground if you are willing to commit and trust the process to losing the rest of your games. Well, is that how. How many more games does Luca have before they shut him down? Two, three? That's a good question. Like, I, I think they play him until like the last I mean, they're, game. But they're, they're one and nine. Like, this is working. Yeah, yeah. Luca goes like, out there, still... goes off, they lose, everyone like he's high fives. So good. He's, he's so, so good, good, but he did a couple of days ago mention that he felt something go pop in yeah, his that's knee, right. which definitely sounds like a precursor to a shutdown to me. Yeah. It was scary, but so many athletes say that. But, like, your knee is made up of all these tendons, right? So it's just like, 
it's a poppy kind of zone. Oh, is that right, Dr. Quo? Yeah. It's like, uh, the knees are kind of poppy zone, if you know what I mean. It is. Is that, is that, is that the Everything scientific pops. term, the, 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 the poppable zone? The what pop- I'm saying is he's... High poppability. I, I, I think that there's a high poppability that he mentioned that. So then yeah. they'll be like, oh, some lingering... Wait, wait for it. Three games, lingering uh, tenderness in the knee, shutting him down. For the I season. could see that. I also am saying that they are tanking full... F- Full fledged, like the rest of the roster around him is an absolute joke. They're going to lose whether he plays or not. Dude, Harrison Barnes is going to get like forty he's, minutes. Man, again. he's, he's already on the Sacramento Kings. Gone. Wake oh, up! Fuck. What? No, I don't have to wake up. But I'm they beat the Knicks. Mr. Excuse. Sleep is the cousin of death over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Thanks. Thanks, nine. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it, let's is rank it, out. Am, let's am I, rank hip hop albums. Am I just not going now. to wake up tomorrow? <laughs> Oh, why are you laughing at that? <laughs> okay, let's debate Tupac and Nas now. Here it is, what you've been waiting for. Nas versus Pac versus Piggy. <laughs> Dude, Ben's wearing Reebok pumps as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> I had the deep brown black tops, yes. Yeah. Um, Here's a qu- I, have, okay. I have a question for you, Jordan. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, perk up. Perk up? I had your number all day. How about this? <laughs> How about this? What? Did LeBron air... In entrusting the final years of his career to Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka, was that a mistake that we did not actually acknowledge when he did it? No. So his this is my overall Lakers 2019 take. Finally. LeBron joined not expecting to make much noise this year. I firmly believe that he was like, all right, you got a year. Uh, and so after he signed... Paul George did not. And so they're kind of like, all right, let's not build a crazy roster this year. Let's not, let's do all the one years, get whoever you want, get whoever's available. We're looking at the following year. We're looking at year two in that off season. And I think that he was fine with more years, potentially more years, potentially not making the playoffs, but then they, they started playing pretty well. Like, you know, a, a few weeks, maybe a month into the season, they started cooking with gas and then I think he was like, all right, fuck it. These young guys aren't as bad as I thought it was. We're playing okay. This is pre the Rondo injury and it's pre the Lonzo injury. Uh, and so it's like, I think then he was like, all right, let's go all in. Him and Rich. It was, I don't think it was Magic and Rob at all. I think it was him and Rich Paul being like, all right, let's try and figure out this Anthony Davis situation. I don't think that was the plan this year. I thought it was the plan this year only because... LeBron doesn't take years off. And, you know, we can throw conjecture onto this whole Space Jam 2 thing. He wants to be healthy for that, for sure. That's why he went to L.A. But, like, the dude wanted to get into the playoffs really badly. He, you know, we isolate plays where he takes off on defense. But, like, he had a great season when he was in there. Losing Lonzo Ball was a big blow. And I th- I think he was probably flabbergasted at what Rob Palinka and Magic did. I don't even consider Palinka doing anything. It's all Magic. Wait, can I just backtrack you there for a second? Healthy for Space Jam 2? What does that even mean? <laughs> he, because he... What? He's doing all of his own stunts. No, but you have to do basketball stuff, so he cares. <laughs> I mean, I could do the basketball stuff in Space Jam. But what about LeGroin? If he does has a bad groin, you can't do any of that stuff. Um, Thank look. you for calling out that, that thing that I was just like, yeah, let's just let that go by. The old had to be healthy for Space Jam. No, but I'm, I'm, that's not even my take. Like, that's a take that's out well, there. Well, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Like, who are all these fucking idiots out there that don't understand how green screen works? Yeah, but you can't move if you have a bad groin, right? So you can't do any of the green students. Green I'm pretty stuff. sure Robert Downey Jr. is not doing all that Iron Man shit. So they're going to CG him dunking? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. No, man. Have He's you, just going to dunk. Have you not seen the final shot from Space Jam where Michael Jordan is CG dunking from the fucking half court line? But he has to do it, right? And they have to put monsters around him. Uh, I'm just concerned about the monster's health. Wait, who are the cameos? Do we know anything about this movie? Blake Griffin, right? Oh, is maybe not now that he's in Detroit and he's no longer a mm. L.A. Hollywood guy. I think it should just be the clutch guys. Like, here's my team. Ben Simmons, Kentavious Tristan, Caldwell Pope. Nerland, KCP, uh. <laughs> Draymond. <laughs> so two, two cameos that are guaranteed, Travis Scott and Drake. Is that happening? For Is sure. it not? You tell me. How is it not? They're Jordan guys. It has to be. This could be when we find out what Travis Scott's voice actually sounds like. That's right. What does it sound like in your mind? Hey, yeah, 
just it's just like echoing ad libs with auto tune. I don't know what he actually sounds like. Somebody, what if he sounds like Tim Duncan? <laughs> um, yeah, I like to rap. I like to rant. To rap. To, to rap. Just Kermit esque. Did Tim Duncan ever try to rap? No, no, not that I know of. Not even one of those grocery store ads or anything. Could he have been like a Baja man? Oh, interesting. Yeah, for sure. You know, but just going back to what we were talking about with Jordan regarding Magic Johnson as the the protectorate of LeBron's re- final years, I agree with Jordan that LeBron did not necessarily think that they were going to win a title this year. I do believe he thought they would bring high-end talent this offseason. I think he believed that someone like... Uh, Paul George would come, that they could acquire a Kawhi. I think that when that didn't happen, they believed that Anthony Davis' gambit would work. I think they thought, I think that they thought that he believed. No, but to me, <laughs> LeBron assumed he would be going to the playoffs. He'd probably have another star with him, and they would make some noise in the playoffs. Did he think they could beat Golden State? Probably not. Now, though, we have to wonder, there's this perception of LeBron James as being the de facto GM. That doesn't really seem to be the case, though, because you've got magic. Are they in cahoots? Sure, but like, who's really making the calls? And now we had a recent revelation or a leak that was clearly from the Luke Walton side that he wanted them to keep Julius Randle. He wanted them to keep Brooke Lopez. And the fact that those guys are not there and players like Rondo and Beasley and Lance are was against his wishes and his ideas because someone's going to take the fall for this Lakers season. It's not going to be LeBron. It's not going to be Magic Johnson. It's not going to be Palinka. It's not going to be Jeannie Buss. There's one guy whose head is going to be on the chopping block. So he's immediately putting out these things like not my idea. This isn't me. Well, this kind of happened in Cleveland already with Griffith, right? Like he was really trying to get that guy to stay. And, uh, you kind of saw the inner workings of how Griffith left that organization. It's like, oh, maybe LeBron oh, you doesn't. Mean Greg have- Griffin, you mean? Griffin. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, like you kind of saw the inner workings of like how he. Well, what? What? what <laughs> you did definitely you- said Griffith. I thought you said like Griffith, Griffin. and I was confused because yeah. I was like, Griffin? I was like Griffith. Griffith. Griffin. 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 David. Griffin. What, what about yeah. if his name was spelled Griffin, like G R Y P H O N? He'd be so much cooler, like the bird, like Gryffindor. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. No, Harry that's spelled Potter even cool. differently. Even cooler. Even no, cooler Griffin. than Harry Potter? Mm-hmm. That- I believe Gryffindor is G-R-Y-F-F-E-N-D-O-R. <laughs> when they showed Griffin the door. <laughs> oh, go on. Wow. Go on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so when, yes, tell but, us about Gryffindor. <laughs> Griffin Gate. But, but like LeBron maybe has not as much influence as we think, uh, especially as we saw this Anthony Davis thing play out, right? Like they just played their cards wrong, I think. And people are kind of, like, they caught up to his bullshit a little bit. Uh, the league doesn't really want to help L.A. at all. Not that any team wants to be helped, but they're tired of being tricked by L.A. Or uh, other, like, Ainge, I think, kind of ruined the vibe for, like, big market teams, like, tricking teams and hoarding assets, you know? Well, also with pushback. What, what, what evidence do we have that LeBron doesn't have as much influence as we thought because of all these things he's saying like currently his damage control being like that's just damage control that doesn't mean that he didn't try and make all this shit happen but but there's no way Magic Johnson or Rob Palenka fucking like do a single move without LeBron okay I disagree I don't think he knows about any of that stuff yeah I I just don't know I think that's kind of the whole (laughs) dilemma here that we generally blame LeBron for personnel decisions that are made because he's such a powerful like figure in the NBA and maybe it is the case maybe Magic's like do you think, hey do is you think- it cool if we bring in Stevenson and he's like yeah cool does that mean that he controlled it or not like is he wor- I mean, but there's also clutch like there's a lot of moving I, he parts to, here I, I would imagine that part of his agreement to go to LA was like I want to be in the in the loop on everything and I want to have he may not have the ability to veto things but I bet that he would he wants to know about things before they happen. So he can at least give his opinion in a red light, green light situation. I think that's probably the case with any superstar. For sure. I would assume that Joel Embiid. Except for DeMarcus Cousins. <laughs> I would assume that Joel Embiid, though, is, is brought into a room or given a heads up. Hey, we're thinking about making this, this move. 
are you cool with? I think about trading Ben I don't Simmons. even know. I don't even know about that. I think it has to be a higher tier player. Like Westbrook might have some say. Um, it, I feel like you have to graduate into that fraternity a little bit. But, I mean... It does, has Westbrook earned that through play or just... Um, sheer like persistence of being rusty. Well, and also just nev- not leaving. Yeah, I think anyone who's so a, a star that's under a long-term contract, you kind of have to give them that even sort of... Does give Damian little, Lillard little, get that? Sure. I would assume that all these guys do who are there and like the face of the franchise, they're established I mean, on a long contract. I don't think they can say yes or no. I think right. it's more like, you cool with this? And if the person's like, fuck no, you cannot do this. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I disagree only in that uh, management has nothing to gain there. It's like... We're going to let you know about something you have no say in. Like, there's no leverage. But in LeBron's case, he's like, I want to come there. There's all leverage. It's all, it's all leverage. Like, he's, they didn't draft him. He's going there of his own free will for the rest of his playing years. Like, what's kind of interesting about this is that it, because of this ambiguity, it creates a situation where no one has responsibility for, like, I just want to know. Who thought it was a good idea to bring in Lance and Beasley? And everyone's like, I don't know. Was it LeBron? Right. Was it Palinka? Was it Magic? I don't know. And, and it's that same triumvirate yeah. who's in charge going forward. And you're like, I don't know who's responsible. I don't know their worldview. I don't know what they want. I mean, I thought losing Randall and Brooke Lopez was massive as well. I couldn't believe they did it. But they did it in order to sign Paul George. Am I, am I correct in saying that? I don't know much about numbers and... Trades and stuff like they that. They intended on signing two. That's Max what I mean. So they, they, they cleared some, they cleared their books to, because they thought they were getting somebody else. But as far as like keeping players, they kept the wrong ones. Like, and Arnovitz wrote an article about that this thing this weekend, being like, there are certain teams like the Knicks and the Lakers who have resisted like the modern trends and like analytics and all that stuff we always talk about to death. But it really showed and it really hurt them this season. Like, they traded away valuable players and hoping to get a, a big fish, and they added all these names that don't necessarily help LeBron or compete against modern teams. So the question that is related to that, if their plan for building a team around LeBron, who they knew was coming, who signed with them right away so that they had all summer to, to put personnel around him that worked, they didn't put shooters around him. We know LeBron James is an incredible distributor and works best in a spread floor offense where you can have shooters around him that feast on open looks. Kuzma's their best shooter. What is that, 31%? And they went and they signed people who can't shoot. So the question I ask you, can Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka build a championship team around LeBron James? Can they get out of their own way? Of course they can, but it, it is almost like not, not their intention. If, if they get the guy they want, Anthony Davis. That's a pretty solid team. I think that competes against uh, Kevin Durant, less Warriors. Um, Houston, obviously, I think it gives them problems. Um, I don't know. I think maybe Magic realizes he needs shooting, even though he's not interested in like necessarily having like a progressive point of view. Um, so he gets uh, someone who can shoot better than Kuzma. Those little things will help. And but at the same time, we're, teams we're so far behind. Excuse me, we're so far ahead of the idea of just just add shooters. That's like that's some JJ era, shit. Right. you know, like Suns, like shooters. Add this, like they're even before that. But it's their point of view isn't going to necessarily produce a unitasker. It might produce like a really good player who could do a bunch of stuff. But they went out and got unitaskers at the <clears> deadline. <throat> is what I'm saying. Well, the, like, the thing is. The main problem with that team is that Magic built it in his own image. He wanted a showtime team. He wanted a team that can come out, run the fast break. He wanted like flashy passing with Rondo, who like pulled half his moves from the Magic Johnson playbook. So he was there to bring Showtime back to Los Angeles. Unfortunately, it's like that's not Showtime anymore. Showtime is PJ Tucker in the corner for a short three. Chris Middleton handling at the one. And I agree, and that's a problem with having really good players, Hall of Fame Hall of Fame players in positions of management because they constantly do this, right? Like Isaiah Thomas has done it. Kevin McHale has done it, um, who's just kind of like a less athletic Kylo Quinn. 
Well, absolutely. I, I mean, that's he's, not up for debate. Or like Bill Russell is like Ben Wallace with worse hair. Stroll Miles Swift on a bad day. So, what's interesting about the Lakers' strategy of aggregating personalities? Like, okay, these guys won't be cowed by LeBron James. They're they'll stand up to him. They'll do all these things like as if that's something that you want out of your team. Dudes will stand up to LeBron, but. It reminds me a little bit of how the Knicks have often assembled teams in the past, where it's like bring in Sheed, bring in Derrick Rose, like names, star power, Tracy McGrady, Steve Francis, bring these guys in, and Baron Davis, legend. This brings us up to a Dolan Jump incident. Phillips. So we had, we had Dolan, Rings, who is baby. kind of that kind of personality, and we saw a couple days ago on Saturday. The, you were there. I was there watching the Sacramento Kings. Against ben, the ben was next. standing next to the other guy's like, yo, you should tell him to sell the team. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, I looked down. I saw Dolan. He was not that far away. He was over there kind of slouching in his, like, you know, black blazer and, and black turtleneck looking surly on the bench. And they, they lost, which is not a bad outcome for the Knicks. But after the game, someone yelled at Dolan, sell the team. And Dolan kind of, like, came over to him and was like, give me air, give me air. And, like, just to him. teeth are very distracting. Those and are like some bright wife, like fangs or what? Uh, uh, veneers. Veneer? Ven- I believe they're called veneers. <laughs> I do like the idea of Dolan wearing fronts, though. All white fronts. <laughs> so he, he gestured yeah, the guy over to ivory. Him. He's like, eight elephants died for my teeth, bitches. <laughs> this is rhino horn. <laughs> Watch, they come right off. He brought the guy over and more or less kicked him out and said, enjoy watching the game on TV. Oh, he, the guy says, it's an opinion. He's like, that's not an opinion, which is correct. He's like, that's rude. Yeah, that's rude. I don't blame him for this. I mean, we're getting so worked up over this. It, he made a mistake. I don't think Dolan should have done that. That's a really mild thing for a fan to say after like a losing season like this. But I'm tired, and I'm, I know I'm wrong here, but I'm tired of blaming Dolan. You know, like I just have this exhaustion where it's like, it feels more like a vibe than anything. It's like, ooh, it's Dolan's fault. I'm like... Is it? Yes, it is. But it's more complicated than just him being surly. I don't know. I mean, in a in a life full of made mistakes, I think this one is a very mild one from Dolan. Like, yeah. whatever. Did he actually ban the dude from the garden? Is he actually that? going to? How do you do that? Yeah, uh, there's no reason he would know who that guy well, was. So, no, so basically what they do is they, they get the, the footage from the TV... And they make a color photocopy of his face. Oh, right. And they stick, and put it, and it, on stick all it up the on entrances. all the windows. Right, right. Bad <laughs> like, man. Yeah, yeah, like like, like eighty six <laughs> from MSG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like shoplifters. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, <laughs> and they Chinese really should just, just do, yeah, that's just do that. Like like have it on the on the jumbo chart every once in a while, just like a blurry just photo. Holding of, like of a him printout, on, yeah, like yeah, you're a, good, you're a good. Staticky black and white photo of the guy from above. Yeah, like with a with a fucking what's it called? Marcus Camby jersey on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of time before, like, facial recognition where you can get banned from MSG, but how would they do it now? I, I Honestly, I believe that I'm sure while, they're, while he's on the MSG property, they probably have the right to ask for his identification. But you don't show and, ID when you come in. Yeah, but you might have to show it if you get into an altercation with the owner of the building. And no, then, but if I mean, he, if they if said, show back, me your ID... Yeah. He might have showed it to him, but if he said no, I'm not going to. They can't like right. force him to. And then if in a week he can, goes can they back, not? I mean, he just said sell the team. He didn't get in a fight. They're, he, they're, like I just don't think there's like illegal grounds for being like yeah. But I then need if they, but then if they ask security or the cops to come and I like, wonder show if the fine ID print because you're yeah, yeah. There's there's fine print. They, they can they can get you to show their ID. If well, they know. also have every single. Like everything is under surveillance anyway, so they could just go and find the seat he was in and, and look and up his name. Stub up, yeah. No, but you don't have to give your name <laughs> to get guy, a ticket. The guy who's the guy who. No, but he might be a season ticket holder, is what I'm saying. Oh, if that's a fi- possibility. If they find the seat he's in and look at him, right. this, they this might be the, like, this we is know the this thrilling is... investigative work we do here on Cookies. No, like, but really, how, how to find out somebody's name if they make fun of you? But how do you ban someone from an arena? Like, there must be a way. I just haven't been able to figure it out. I don't think out. they can. They can legally ban him if they're going to put out like a restraining order. So it's like that fan can't so come there. So if he there. gets busted again, he's like in trouble. I don't know. But I'm saying who knows if they did anything legal. Like, but they can certainly find him and identify him if they can and say, 
you're not allowed to have season tickets anymore if you had them. We can take your season tickets away. Exactly. And then what if like his brother buys season tickets elsewhere and just goes with his brother? But that's I mean you can say you can't come on here, and then if he did, maybe they would just escort that's my him question. Out. Like, yeah, right? I don't yeah, know. I don't know how that works, but I mean I think it's the same as a bar. Yeah, like you can't you're you're banned from here. If they come in, you're not like all right, you're arrested. It's right. not legal. There's no way to do that unless someone recognizes you. But um, he's like he's he's out the front of the machine on on front like who's working the door tonight? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in there like cool into his seat like really you know he's, thick mustache. He's on, on his friend's shoulders with a trench coat <laughs> and like a mustache. I did that once. I got banned from a, a club. That we would frequent because um, I ripped all the insulation out of the ceiling. When Why'd was, you do that? Because uh, Down on the Street by Iggy Pop and the Stooges was a very triggering song for me. I lost my damn mind and jumped up and, <laughs> like, uh, and ripped all the insulation out of the ceiling. That um, will get you kicked out. Yeah. Uh, it was in the middle of... I was having fun, guys. You know, whatever, whatever happened to that? Yeah, it wasn't... You remember? Like the old he wasn't New York, trying to, he wasn't trying to get York. Like sell the venue. Well, this, this was, was actually... This insulation was, this out. Was many years ago. This was in Australia. And so... I grew a insane beard for about a month and changed the kind of clothes that I wore and uh, started frequenting the bar again, basically in disguise as a different person. Did it work? Yeah. Yeah, I got like a good three weeks out of it before the beard drove me crazy and I shaved it off. So you're saying there's a solution for the grow, grow, grow a beard, beard and I kind of dressed tech? vaguely like a, like a vagrant. A vaguely vagrant. Vaguely vagrant. Oh, so yeah. Beard. Well, it's interesting because uh, after that footage came out, they are tr- people are trying to revoke his uh, tax abatement because, like, I don't know, there's something about him not paying taxes on MSG, saving forty million dollars a year, having to be like a public place. And oh, if he, but Donald's one of those rich white people throwing cheese on their baby, <laughs> <laughs> so rich. Um, but like, you can't kick someone out. I think there's like some sort of argument. You know, there. your legal entanglements are not are not convincing me. Yeah, no, I, it's not even. I mine. mean, you're definitely a doctor, but you're sure not a lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Like your 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 poptastic uh, knee joints. That was convincing. Thing. Yeah, convincing. I believe that. Part. Oh, of course, you've had you've heard of pop, and yeah, you've been yeah. fine. Yeah. But this part, these yeah. these legalese things, I'm no. Just I not just asked it. you guys, how do you ban someone from a place? And he, Jordan oh, answered, he, "You cannot do it." Objection. <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> okay, badgering the witness. Now not what? Grow a beer, chest hair beer tech. Objection. Irrelevant. <laughs> um, I'm not mad at Dolan. It's your stadium, your team. Who cares, man? Like, you yelled at the owner. Cool, yeah. you're out. Peace. Yeah, it's like, chill. If you, if you were having a pizza party at your house and someone was like, Yo, Ben, you should go uh, fuck yourself, what would you say? Yeah, can you leave? Can you leave? Please. And here are my goons to make sure that happens. Yeah. <laughs> he is the worst. But yeah, I mean, who cares? Stop yelling at the owner and thinking I, there's not consequences. I was really, I'd never actually heard Dolan speak before that. So, oh, really? His yeah. press conferences are hilarious. But, okay. so, but I just mean, like, oh, sorry, what were you saying? No, I mean, I'm like, Dolan. I, I like it. I like, I like him mixing it up with the common man. I like, I like seeing like altercations in the stands, shit Uh-oh. like that. Westbrook. Uh oh, Westbrook. Uh-oh. Uh, last night, a fan was heckling him, and he threatened the fan and his uh, companion, maybe wife. I think he said the word wife. But how did he threaten them? What did he, what did he say? Like, what happened? What's, what, on, what was the circumstances? You have to, you have to let us know. Spell it out for those who have, <laughs> say the, are not up on Westbrook News. Say the words. We won't even whoop whoop you. But what, what happened? I think he was. Uh, the game was over. He was going to the bench. Someone yelled something at him, and he proceeded to like respond and be like, "I'll fuck you up. I'll you know fuck up your wife. You know all these things." And he proceeded to interact with this fan like for an extended period of time while everyone was watching this go down. And it was kind of like this weird tension between like uh, he crossed the line immediately. So people were waiting to see. So afterward, the game. They asked him about it, and or I don't know if he actually answered questions, but he sort of gave a monologue about it and his his account of what happened. And this is in Utah, which has a, a history of people saying insensitive, potentially racist remarks from the crowd, and that's just what players have always said. The man was white, and he said the guy said, "Get down on your knees, like you Wait, used to." He only had one. one wife. That's weird for Utah. Yeah. 
But that, he said something about like get down on your knees like you used to. That's what it was something along those lines. And Westbrook's like, which he denies, right? And Westbrook said that he said this and was like, that's why I responded the way I do. There's got to be consequences for fans who think they're entitled to say anything. And it is a little like the Dolan thing where Dolan can get guys kicked out of the game for saying things that are not that objectionable. But now we're parsing between Westbrook when someone may have said something really fucked up to him, but but he's not allowed to respond or like get someone booted or what does that even mean? Get down on your knees like he used to. I think it was interpreted as a, as a racist subjugation thing, thing? A subjugation, like, slavery, et cetera. And he claims he was like icing his knees, so he's just like, you're always hurt anyway. It was a basketball diss. I mean, he could have definitely misheard him. Like, you know what I mean? It's a, and Westbrook it's an, is a hothead, and we don't know anything hothead, about this guy. It's an arena. I'm not, I'm not definitely not like supporting someone from Utah that only has one wife. Like, fucking lame <laughs> Like, are you even Utah? Yeah. Are you even trying to be from Utah? Yeah, what a fucking dog. Um, <laughs> like, you guys have one edge. Multiple <laughs> wives. When I insulted OJ Mayo about his weight, if he'd come at me, I would have Extra been... Extra Mayo. I would have been okay with that. But you're a, you're a nobleman. A, a, a lord, if you will. <laughs> um, you live by a code. And obviously, like, Making fun of somebody's uh, diet and, uh, you know, heftiness is, is a little different to... Than systemic racism and subjugation over the course of four centuries. And there's that story that came out this week about um, Boston fans kind of favoring or giving Gordon Hayward an easier time than their other superstars because they prefer white players on their team, especially white superstars. Breaking news out of Boston. I know. This but... just in. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. I think also Hayward might get some sympathy because he snapped his leg in half. But I don't oh. think the players are mad at Hayward on no. Boston. From that report, it was more that like, they're just kind of aware that Boston fans are like, we want a white star. Yeah. Look, I get it. Westbrook is like, well, just because people pay for seats, they can't say and do whatever they want. He's kind of taking it. it. I don't, again, we don't know the full story behind it, if the dude said it or not. But I do know that I definitely saw him chastise a fucking nine-year-old kid for touching him on the arm. But like, the kid touched him on the yeah, arm during, like, during the game. I you think he handled that touch, well. You can't touch players. That's crazy. And when the kid touched him, he didn't know it was a kid. So when he turned around in but anger, when he when he realizes that it's a kid, just be like, all right. Also, that kid kind of tapped him on the arm because he was... The, maybe the kid shouldn't have been standing up. Like, whatever. The kid was fully in the wrong on that. And yeah. I'm not saying it's and like... The, there's not a excuse did, did for a nine-year-old. you think the kid struck him as yes. a like, yes. oh, you do? I think the kid was standing up in his face and you saw him kind of like swat at him. It wasn't like a, oh my God, it's Westbrook. I'm going to like graze him. He actually kind of like pushed and like swatted at him while standing up. I, look, I, in, in my opinion, from how I saw it, he was standing there and he didn't see Westbrook and Westbrook like came very close to him and he kind of like swatted him away because it was just somebody in his proximity. I don't think he was going after Westbrook. I think he was. I think he was when we're all kids. We're just like, what does it feel like to light this on fire? You know, like, what does it feel like to hit this thing? I think he was like, he's in right in front of me. I'm just going to touch him. And he's just like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. And I thought Westbrook handled it fine. He, was, he glared at him. They talked to him and he played on. But this brings us to a larger thing here. And it I kind don't of, know, man. I don't know. Like, like, look Westbrook at the, seems like the kind of guy that would be like really mad if he got touched by like one of those subway dancers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, like he's like, what? Get away from me, young bud. I mean, Westbrook had he's a hothead, uh, but well, he had, he's in his little monologue. He had said, "I've never had these kind of things." Like you actually have had more run-ins with fans than almost anyone I can think of. That doesn't mean they've gone beyond verbal, but there was a thing in in Philly where a guy was like a fat fan was yelling at him and he yelled some shit back. There was the time when he swatted the ball away in Denver, I think, when the mascot did the thing. Like Westbrook is is he mixes it up. Well there's the one with the double fingers guy. I think it was that Philly yes. that yes. that's very fair. And the thing that makes that. us love him as a player is the reason why he lashes out like this. So we can't like celebrate his tenacity and expect him to shut it down. Yes, but we're talking about a dynamic and using this individual as like, this is about him and his personality and how he feels. But when he talks about it, he's talking about a bigger issue that he seems to just react to where he's like, I don't like the way that these fans are allowed to speak with me to me 
in public, in this space where I'm there, I'm performing, and they're allowed to say abusive things to me, and I can't respond. And that's kind of a weird um, juxtaposition with Dolan, who's an owner, who's like, nope, you're out of here. And these guys, like, I'm out there actually performing. And people are saying fucked up things to me and I can't respond. And when I do, I get criticized. Like, are, are we allowed to talk shit to the players? Is there a line? Are, can There's they no respond? Yeah, I'm sure that the line would be threatening a fan with physical uh, but, but I'm saying violence. For, but it, I'm talking about the other way around. I'm not saying that Westbrook was in the right for saying he's going to threaten, for threatening them. I'm saying... Are players allowed to respond and say "fuck you"? I think they are. Yeah, but there's no answer. Like this is a long debate that has no answer, right? Like we've been talking about this for decades. Like what? Is, what since the malice in the palace? And that kind of boiled over to an untenable position of those players were just trying to protect themselves at some point. But yeah, you just get kicked out when you're a dick, right? Like. Just don't be an asshole. And Dolan overreacted, definitely. And I think the interesting thing is the way Dolan sees this product, the way basketball players see this product, and the way the fans see this product. Because it's either like their right to do something, uh, a scene where they have to behave themselves with a code, or a privilege. I guess what I'm trying to say. You paid $30 million a year for me to be racist to. That's the privilege part, right? It's like you are a privileged. If I want to be you, so you're getting paid so much, you should be able to hear that from me. But that's exactly what I'm getting at. Are we, is our definition of what's acceptable changing? Where in the 90s, you could just be like, fuck your mother. And people, they're like, the player's just supposed to take it. And now it's like, actually, they don't. You don't have the right to be abusive because you bought a ticket. Or is that just part of the sports experience that you're allowed to heckle players? These are, I, I, we might be changing in the way that we view what is well, we're policing appropriate behavior. Ourselves. We're policing ourselves, right? Because it was, this was caught on an iPhone. So we have this reaction as a group, cons- as a consensus to talk about it. And then I think we act according to that consensus. Yeah. I, or maybe just lift the uh, like maybe maybe lift the what's it called insomnia uh, repercussions on players. Maybe people talk a lot less shit if they don't feel as protected. Like, what if someone goes full Eric Cantona and just like fly kicks a fan in the face? Like, what did you say about my mom? What's if up now? Westbrook is allowed to go into the stands yeah. and fuck up your girlfriend. Yeah. Maybe okay. you'll, maybe well, you'll well, think before you punch you me seriously. in the arm, and then I can punch you in the yeah, arm. Yeah, what's, <laughs> yeah, what's up now, dickheads? <laughs> uh, but you know, we also have player on player violence to talk about. Ibaka, Serge Ibaka, notorious goon. He's a guy who will always throw an elbow at you. He's the center on the Toronto, Toronto Raptors. A large. Physically imposing guy. The Just most handsome man in the NBA. Handsome, brolic. Young. <laughs> and it's still in his early 20s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, he squared off against Marquise Chris. Dude, that punch, man. That's yeah. not squaring off. He didnn't square off. He it was just a scrap. It was a scrap. I take it back. back. He yoked him up and tried to punch him in the yeah, face. Yeah, <laughs> there, was the, there was no square he didn't, up. He didn't, he didn't square up. He choked he, him and he, then like, threw a punch. He sucker <laughs> choked him. And then, yeah, like, fully, like, pushed him up. Like... I really wish the, the, the basket, what are those things called? The basket protector, the stands. Stanchion? Stanchion. I really wish, wish on that broadcast that the stanchion made the same sound as when you throw somebody up against the grate of a New York City shop. Oh, yeah. The, the door when it comes down. That After you get dunked on from scaffolding? Yeah, thanks, Ben. <laughs> but that would have been, been more fun if it just made that like... <laughs> this... So the play started almost innocuously. They kind of got tangled up on like a last second heave at the end of the third quarter. And then Chris kind of stood over him and looked, looked, like, he, him looked like he said he some shit and glared at him. And then Ibaka just flipped and yoked him up and tried to punch him. If he had caught him, that might have been like a three-week suspension. Oh, he might have three weeks? Intent versus results, man. It's like... It's like ring bias, right? It's like, well, if he connected, that would have been a suspension, but he missed it. If them. your punch was more accurate, you'd yeah. be out of here. <laughs> yeah. Wait, if he connected on that punch to the face, that's season. You can't do that anymore. Like, that was, 
We haven't seen many connections in history, right? No, well, no. Chris and, and if they and if they have, they. I mean, how many games did Mello get for his one back in the day? And I think they're even less uh, tolerant of it when now. he backed up. Like, yeah, <laughs> but like. You know, J.R. Smith got a handful of games for that back fist, which was intentional, but there yeah. was like Neat an Robinson element of, uh, yeah. of like, oh, I didn't know he was there. I was just trying to get him yeah. off me. That was, he he stood up after a player was walking away, grabbed him from behind, grabbed him by the throat, attacked him. As far as I could see, Chris didn't even throw a punch that wasn't just trying to defend himself. And then and he, he didn't do anything physical to start that whole no, imbroglio. At all. He, he, he was he, just kind of looked stood at next him. To him he knew him. what the fuck he was doing. Yeah, but he didn't. No, no. Well, it's like when so who no, <laughs> no. It's like when you walk over a player. That's disrespectful. But he and when didn't you, walk over him. He didn't do anything. Oh, that was disrespect, though. Oh, whatever. And I mean, also, it, it we was, don't know what was, happened throughout the game. I mean, also, it was like, disrespect, but that's different from taking it to trying to decapitate someone with like a right. Like straight right, nineties, also, like, also hip-hop like really, is, like, yes, are you, finally toughness is back. Are you, are you, are you that much of a fucking sad boy that you're gonna get upset by somebody looking at you when you're on the ground and bark? Like what a oh for fucking sure baby. Also, and also lack of self control to throw that punch. Like you're a really important player on this team, on a potential championship team, I mean, and you will not be on that team for the rest of the season if you land a. Uh, like, he cocked that shit back and tried to bang on him. I mean, for some context, Ron Artest got seven games for that elbow against Harden, which I thought he should have been suspended for, like, a season. Because that he could have killed James Harden. That was insane. But he got that seven. Was ugly. And I feel like that's probably what he would have gotten unless Chris, say, broke his face. If the kind of punch that took a... Well, again, elbow, an elbow where you can kind of pretend that you were getting somebody off you or like they were on you and you were trying to like you know what I mean that's very different to like standing in front of somebody and throwing a punch at their head that's I, completely different I that's sp- why the that's why the uh J.R. Smith spinning back fist and that elbow even though they were caused like quite a lot of harm they were they were not looking when they did it which is a huge part of the intent of throwing the right. Punch. I mean, if he had just thrown a straight right and connected and like knocked him unconscious, it could have been like a Kermit Washington, Tom John. I think it was Tom Johnovich Tom Johnovich yeah. thing where he could have broken his jaw. But this kind of discussion is so weird, right? Because it's like we're talking about like, did he connect? What, what was he feeling? What was the intent? And Abaka won't come out and say certain things. I'm sure, but I bet you he's like, I've always hated Marquis Chris. You know, it's just like that was. I just boiled over. He's done shitty things to me the whole time. Those 300 minutes that he's played as a professional have ground my gears. Yeah, but it like how, how many times has he really faced up against Marquise Chris? Probably a lot more than we think. Because Marquise Chris has been in the league, what, for three years? Four years? And like, yeah, but isn't Ibaka playing starter minutes and Chris isn't? Huh? Huh? Quo? Dr. Lawyer Quo? <laughs> <laughs> but like, it is, fighting is the dumbest thing to talk about, right? Because it's like, we're just like... I thought the Lakers was the dumbest thing to talk about. But go ahead. Oh, the Magic Johnson supporter has logged on, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the Lakers are the new sixes. Kill me. Um, oh, I thought we were doing a basketball pod. We are. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, fight. I don't love fighting in the NBA. I don't think it's that fun. I don't like fighting in other sports. It, it's always a mess, and it's always what about just boxing? Like, well, that's sanctioned. Like, that is the thing, right? Like, hockey is kind of weird because they allow it still, and it's, like, rewarded. They have played four times. I just looked it up. Just for the record. But if that's people, a lot of people, times. People want to know if Chris and But Ibaka, it just takes one thing, oh, right? It could, it could, that was kind of what I was saying. It, it yeah. could have been. They, they played four times. There's enough space there for them to get irritated. But Abaka throws elbows quite frequently, and he, so likes, he likes doing them in a scrum. No, I mean, Abaka tries to hurt people. He, he, oh, he, oh, my God. Here we go. I mean, Abaka's, Abaka is a goon. Yeah, I've, but I've, so what? I've seen... Well, there's not a so what. I just mean this outburst by him <laughs> is not outside of the character of what we've seen from Serge Abaka. Abaka like Zaza. Abaka, <coughs> Zaza. So you, you hate fighting in sports, but you don't care if someone's a goon who tries to hurt people. Well, those are two fine... Because oh, I don't think Abaka's oh, a goon. Well, you say the, he's a goon, so the, he's a goon, The right? lawyer is going to make a, a differentiation here. You guys are the cops. I mean, like, just let him, like, let him be a rough player. And if he throws a punch, I'm not that interested. Sustained. 
Uh, I don't have a problem with him throwing a punch. I'm saying he's fortunate, and so is Chris, that he didn't connect on that. And we will always have these rules that are much like murder and attempted murder. That's the way our system works. Could you imagine, like, Kawhi going to the Clippers all hinged on whether or not Ibaka landed a punch? The ramifications, the punch heard around the world. Fortunately. <laughs> Mostly m- in Canada. Mark Gasol. I, I, they have, they've got him on the, on the roster. That would have been, I mean, in, granted it's not in the playoffs, but, like, having Mark Gasol, good insurance policy against Goonery from... Serge Ibaka. I mean, the most famous example of goonery that costs maybe some wins is the Knicks, right? Coming off the bench. Yeah. That probably cost them that series. Oh, come on. The Phoenix one. That's the, that's that the one was notorious huge. one, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you had the Suns against the Spurs. Steve Nash got kind of like elbowed by Robert Ory, maybe? I mean, he got hip-checked hip into checked. the fucking scorer's table. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was a brutal hit. And that... That could have changed the course of basketball for like a decade because people sure. are like, yep, the D'Antoni system doesn't work because and like it's soft and they can't win the big games. And it's like they also lost two of their star players for the rest of the, se- the and, series. And we can't forget how good that Indiana team was during the Malice and the Palace season. Like they were rolling, they were uh, championship contenders. And then it just like ruined their chances at that entire run. And then the players left and. They're still, I think, feeling the ramifications of that situation. Well, your your boy Dan Tony's gonna have another chance at his system basketball winning a championship. That's the bummer, right? That Golden State won, credited him. We know the Dan Tony system works, but Dan Tony's still there. Like he can't, he just can't get to that next level. He's like never been to a finals. It's is it no Dan longer... Tony or Dan Tony? Dan Tony. Is it Dan Tony? I think it's Dan Tony. Dan Dan Tony, the best name of all time. It's a great name. Yeah. And we were imagining that his middle name was Anthony. Yeah, Dan Anthony Dan Tony. So Dan Tony Dan Tony. <laughs> yeah. So the Rockets thought they had their season last year. They they were built specifically to go against the Golden State Warriors. They were up in the Western Conference Finals. Six games. I'm sorry. In a after game six, they were up. They had a, what was it? They had a 3-2 lead and then lost the last two. I, he pulled the hammy in game six. Right, okay, right, right. So, so they, five, they were, they were up in the series. Yeah. Chris Paul they got hurt. They were up 3-2. Yeah, thank you. Pulled his hammy. And we know the rest. Six. So oh, this so season, close. this season the, the Rockets did not look good out the bat. They had some injuries to Carmelo. Capella, Chris Paul. The Carmelo Anthony situation was a debacle. They losing a, Bob Mute was a huge deal. They lost Ariza as well, which was kind of widely credited as the reason that they struggled out of the gate. But they've now won nine games in a row. They're back to having the second best offense in the NBA. Defense is like mediocre, but they're an incredibly good team right now with an MVP candidate in James Harden. And tomorrow night, they play the Warriors. Can we call the Rockets a threat this season in the way that we could last year? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, they are they're they're hitting their playoff form at the exact right time, and this team right now also because Capella is you know bowling again. He Eric was, Gordon's he was, healthy. Eric Gordon's healthy. Capella was not great at the start of the season. I didn't think compared to he's how ethical. He has not shot a three all season. Incredibly virtuous player. <laughs> um, and yeah. They're, they're, they're definitely a problem for the Warriors. And I love how uh, Maury kept on making moves until he kept on tinkering. He, he didn't rest like some other teams, uh, like the Celtics or the Warriors. He kept on tinkering, and he asked Harden to change his game. And Chris Paul is a remarkably depreciated player right now. He, like, he looks different. Um, but Harden going nuclear and then him filling out different roles has been pretty incredible in terms of GMing. And, oh, so I was going to say, even the roster tinkering, like going and finding Kenneth Fareed, who is not a great player, who is available Scrap for heap. anyone who wanted him. But they've gotten him, and he's given him almost 500 minutes, and he's been reasonably good. Austin Rivers. Uh, exact same thing. He hasn't been that good, but he's given him 1,000 minutes at the guard, which they needed when Gordon was out and Chris Paul was out. Like they've Daryl Morey, the general manager, has continued to try to actively upgrade that team and they're it's working well, yeah awesome. and also they had 20 games to plan for the future because 
the chances of Chris Paul finishing the playoffs are probably pretty slim. It's hammy time. It's hammy time. So, <laughs> so like, so now they they have lineups. They have uh, different rotations and and plays drawn up for just, for James Harden just to fuck around and win an entire playoff series on his own. So, and it's lining up for them, like like you said, like Capella is healthy, uh, uh, Eric Gordon's healthy. They don't have Chris Paul is giving them minutes again. It's all kind of forming. It's all happening and. The fear is that they're a little too top heavy, right? Because of usage. With yeah, but Harden. if but I think I think if they can sort of pull it back a little bit toward the end of the season after they get the playoff position that they want, James Harden can rest a little bit. And I think I think he's resilient enough to play, even if they're top heavy, just to play those forty two minutes a game and go all the way through. It's a good playoff and, model. And uh shit, no, he's I got so damn good. Free. He's so good. It's also crazy. also he last season. He was amazing. He was the MVP, but there were times where he would like acquiesce to Chris Paul as the incoming like other superstar. Uh, I think now this season he's gonna be like, whatever, Chris. Like you, you keep your sunning Chris yeah, Paul. I kind of that. like just like like keep your busted ass on the bench. I'll get. I got this. Like he can he can do that without feeling like he's disrespecting anybody. And we haven't seen the Rockets get any good minutes at all from Amon Shumpert, who I thought was a pretty good pickup, and I like his game, and he fits into what they're trying to do. It's a known commodity. I think that'll work have, out. Have a guy who can defend, knock down some threes, and he, he was Playoff playing... experience. He's playing well in Sacramento. Next Knicks legend, Lynn Sanity. I, I, I think he will be someone that we could see play a significant role for them in the postseason. Just watching the Rockets play recently it's kind of interesting how how teams are are built and how you emphasize what you're good at and when they played philly it was a pretty stark contrast between a team that was looked very large and slow despite the fact they have a lot of talent and the rockets who on paper a lot of these guys aren't great you have harden like eric gordon not impressive rivers not impressive gerald green not impressive but you're like but together but they're fast they shoot tons of threes they they can all handle the ball. They can do these things. And I think that's what's kind of cool about the NBA right now, that you can say, okay, we've got Harden, but if we are smart about how we construct this roster, we can just take advantage of teams. There were, there were times when they would have three or four guards on the court against Philly who on paper should be a better team than the Rockets, and they were just destroying them. And I think what... This is kind of what I've been waiting for because in baseball we've seen this and um, with Billy Bean and the A's. Recently he's just been acquiring a lot of depth and just like subbing players in and out at things they're good at. So like unitaskers are cheaper because they're not like on the market. You, they're, they can be had like them on Chumper. So you just switch out for need and for situation. But we're not talking about unitaskers though, right? We're talking about like duo taskers maybe. Yeah, in, in NBA it's different. It behaves differently. But, you know, certain players do better against small ball lineups and certain players do well against... Uh, in in certain quarters, you know, against certain lineups, and I think we see D'Antoni like subbing these guys out fast and furious, and it's amazing to see, especially with a guy handling most of the usage and James Harden on a on a basketball trend line. We can see how defense was kind of devalued because it's harder to detect. You can you can tell when yeah, someone's not a observable. good three point shooter. You can look right. at the numbers. Oh, he's scoring X amount of points, and he's knocking them down at this percentage. We know he's a good shooter. He can help us. And that's true. But we're seeing teams trying to figure out how do you get guys who can both shoot and defend? How do you get a guy who can also handle the ball? What traits don't you need guys to have when you've got James Harden? If we've got Harden and we've got Chris Paul, we might not need someone who can dribble. But then again, maybe that's important too. A- another guy who can dribble gives you a totally different dynamic. All these moving parts are are really interesting and when you see a team, especially like the Rockets, which are top-heavy. You've got two star guards, and then you've got a big guy who can catch lobs and defend the paint, and everything else is malleable. Yeah, and I really appreciate Maury's ability to cut his losses. Like, he's tried so many things within the season and just cut bait on them. Michael Mar- Carter-Williams, Michael Car- out of here. Marquise Chris, out of here. Brandon Knight didn't really turn out to be the guy he wanted, yet... He's kept on going, and now we're here. And the, and the Carmelo Anthony in the room, Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> I mean, that's a great example. He's like, I think I can get something out of Melo. And he's like, I can't. We forgot to make fun of Melo with the Lakers talk, man. He was waiting for his triumphant oh, return, man. 
He was mellow, and they're like, um, "Mellow's not into it anymore." That was the best part. Like, Mellow's out. But the <laughs> but I also also it's like uh, Andre Ingram. Would you like a shot? Carmelo Anthony. Don't worry about it. Well, the the diss was like. We're a good team right now, and we'll get to the playoffs, and then we'll add you. And as soon as they were kind of faltering, they're like, no, no, we need to be better, so we're not going to add you. You cannot make us better. But the, the, the bummer here is that, if I am correct, the deadline for signing players who can be on the postseason roster has passed. Yeah, I think it's I, over. I think. That's definitely for two-way guys, but I think it, it's for everyone. Yeah. So like, we're not going to have like late-season acquisition mellow to like show up in the playoffs. I could be wrong. There might be something different. It's kind of sad, like, man. I kind of wanted Melo on a playoff team. Yeah, he's awesome. He's still a good basketball player. He's healthy. And it's sad to see him go out like this. Do you guys think he's going to have a team next year? No. I think he's done. I think he was done the minute he giggled when uh, they the reporter asked him whether he would be willing to come off the bench. <laughs> and he giggled to Paul Optically, George. that was bad. Look. Like, yo, P... They want oh, me to yeah. come off the bench, ha ha. And then it was like, well, yeah, everybody wants you to come off the bench. And it was just Paul George. What? I'm sorry, what's that over there? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, oh, oh my, uh, sorry, I, I got to go. I, um, it was, so for, there's for there's a, a starter over there. I, yeah. I, I don't even think, like, optically, I think that was, that was, the, that was the, the, the Fonzie shock jump right there. And but, then, were, oh, but then he signed with the Rockets. Yeah, but, that, but he didn't make any noise with them. Like, they gave him a chance, though. Like, he had some shots. Yeah, I know, I'm just saying that, like, it... It never looked better for Melo than it did right before he answered that question. And I think there's a, a little bit of a, a triggering impact from his association with Iverson. On Denver, that was his role model, and Iverson said those exact same kind of things. Like, me, coming off the bench? Come on, that's crazy. And people were like, okay, we can't have you on our team, man. Yeah. Like, we think you could be useful as a reserve guard. And he's like, but I'm Allen Iverson. And I also respect that from both Mel and Iverson. Like, look, you don't get whatever version of me yeah. that you want. You get the star. I'm a star. I've proven that. If you want this version, you have to commit to, I'm getting my minutes. I'm in the starting lineup. I'm this. I'm not willing to compromise myself, and you're not willing to compromise. Then we're just going to go our separate ways. I'm, I'm into that. I really can relate to Mello because, like... <laughs> It's such a human thing. A lot, a lot thing. of people compare you to. Wait, is, right. he, is he also a doctor and a lawyer? Cuomelo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Carmelo. Um, but like everyone's just like, you need to do these small things that you're not used to doing. So go into the game and do those things. And he's like, no, nah, I'm just good at what I'm good at. Like I'm comfortable. Can I counter? Like rebounding. Leroy Jenkins, right? Okay, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. What about a dozen jab steps and an 18-footer? Well, it's like, what I mean is like, they're like, okay, we need you to rebound. We need you to pass. We need you to Got shoot it. a yep. court. Uh-huh. But then when you're in there, you're just like, nah, man, I'm, this brick is going up, you know? But the thing that's crazy is that he when, he, when he, when he really wanted to be, he was quite a good rebounder and passer. Like, He's a Hall of they, Famer, man. They were not, he was, he was no slouch in those departments. He just wanted to slouch in those departments. I love those, I mean, like early on with the Rockets, they're like, you know, we take threes here. He's like, Phew. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 I got it. And then he go in there and like jab step, jab step, like long eighteen footer, and then run back to the bench. Like my bad, my bad. Yeah, like ah, yeah, uh, yeah. uh, you know, D'Antoni, I I see you. I yeah. you trust me, run the same page. But isn't that so relatable? <laughs> because you're just like I want to, I want to make my career longer. Therefore, I think I should do the things I'm good at. But he's not good at those things anymore. So like the hubris is what gets in the way because he's still like a really good basketball player. He could do all these things you're talking about. But he's like. If I don't show them I, I can't drop 40 anymore, I'm done. I mean, I don't know that he's still a good basketball player. And, and these are the but sort of dovetailing right. issues, right? It's a guy who's 34 years old, who has a ton of mileage on him. He was never the kind of physical Adonis that LeBron was. Dwayne Wade, same class, is basically out of the league. Like, there's no shame in Carmelo yeah. Anthony being a shadow, a husk of his yeah. former self. And he can't defend on NBA level anymore. He can't get to the line like he used to. He just He's just not the same player. He's 34 years old. He played in the Olympics. Didn't play in that many playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like he's, he's, he's played since he was 19 in the NBA in, in a ton of minutes. Him being washed and unwilling to accept that, it's, it's kind of cool. Speaking of 34-year-old husks, is uh, Andrew Bogut going to be playing tomorrow night against the Rockets? 
is he back in the rotation or is he still just basking in the glow of his NBL MVP? Which is so funny. I mean, how long does that flight take? Like it's like a week and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's traveling by steamer. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's actually he's in a layover in Dubai right now. He's hopping along on a kangaroo. <laughs> um, uh, that's offensive. <laughs> right? Is that offensive? Are we offended? No, kangaroos are awesome. Yeah, whatever. Dingoes? We, we kill lots of kangaroos every year. That's how awesome they are, quote. They're so yoked. Like, yeah. what's up with them squaring up? I don't know. That's how they fight. What's the whole, like... But they fight with their legs. They can That's disembowel scary. you, right? Isn't that the whole deal? Yeah. Like, you got to watch for your bowels? Yeah. They, they rise up on their tail and then use their, their feet to disembowel. But have you seen that video of the kangaroo squaring up against that guy? And the guy, like, throws a right... The right at his chin, and the kangaroo's like oh, whatever, and hops off. Yeah, it's. In, I thought it was fake, but it's real. It's insane. That's insane. They're dangerous, right? <clears throat> yeah. Well, you see earlier in the in the clip, the kangaroo tries to disembowel his dog. That's why he goes crazy. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, and the only reason the dog doesn't get disemboweled is because he was boar hunting, and so it was wearing a, a protective oh, plate because that's when they when they go for the boars. That's how sure. the boars also attack them. And uh, and the dude the dude was just scared and I believe this may be an urban myth but I'd, maybe it's not I think I believe he had cancer so he was like fuck this oh would you say that tangling with a kangaroo is generally a bad idea super bad idea like that's why people were like well, what's wrong with this guy that's so crazy square like that kangaroo could have and the only reason he didn't get fucked up because I think kangaroo was like no one's ever tried to fight me before <laughs> yeah in in the history of my species, no one's tried the Marquise Chris. But wasn't kangaroos. that a thing though? Like the kangaroo boxing? Yeah. The boxing oh, yeah. kangaroo is the is like a, a trope. sporting emblem for Australia. Right, but didn't they actually put them in rings yes. and stuff? Yes. And they uh box with their like short arms? They put the boxing exactly. gloves they on the, their short they put arms. On, right? the, on their short arms and so it was like uh, it was a humorous thing. It wasn't like Oh, there! It wasn't like a cockfight. It's not like kangaroos fighting to the death. It was but, more of a circus uh, okay. fairground attraction. No, it's hugely disappointing. Because kangaroos also disembowel each other, then, right? When they fight, I, I don't know if kangaroos fight to the death. To be honest, I've no, I have no evidence of that. I heard the same thing about ostriches. Like they're kind of dangerous too. The whole like disemboweling thing is not very sporting. No, no, no it's abaca ish. Ibaka attempted to disembowel Marquise Chris <laughs> with his toenails. <laughs> yeah. The grossest thing about was when someone's tooth got stuck in David that Lee's gross. arm on and like shoulder, infected yeah. it and gave him like gangrene or something. That yes. was one of the grossest NBA injuries of all time. Like Ugh. we're gonna have to amputate it because someone's <laughs> tooth is just lodged in your stuff bone. Infection from Ugh. some dudes. Who was it? Who would it be? Who is the grossest dude? Moochie Norris. Oh, no, no, it's Tyler Johnson, obviously. That's the grossest <laughs> tooth in the NBA. Teej will just leave a tooth in your arm just, just for shits and giggles. And then rap about it. <laughs> what, I always who, wondered what Lamar Odom's teeth looked like. Candy man? Oh, that's true. He had a lot of candy. Candy habits. I feel like those are, are still around, but with the, the emphasis on NBA wellness, it might be a dwindling industry, the, the having totally grotesque diets because now everyone hears about them and then you probably have to answer who's, them. Like who's, the, who's, like the, who's the NBA secret eater like Brittany Murphy hiding roast chickens under the bed in Girl Interrupted? Remember that scene? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's, who's, hiding, who's hiding chicken carcasses under the bed? Well, it's not Turkaloo. He's out of the league doing bad stuff. I mean, I think all of them have metabolisms that are just a furnace. That's so that's like you're kind yeah, of... Yeah, but that's not the question. Who is oh, the guy on, holding chicken baby? carcasses? Uh, who's the fattest guy in the NBA right now? Luka Doncic? What is he Donkey. hiding? What's he hiding? Nachos. Not, no, no, Don't yeah. Don't is hiding like all the all the hostess products. He's like, oh my god, like <laughs> all this shit is crazy. And it's only seventy five cents at the deli. Right, right. He's like like butternut crunch cookies. That's what he's hiding. Does Doncic all crush cookies, all of his? Snacks. Does he crush all of his nachos so he can just eat them with a spoon really fast? I think he's into the chip integrity. Do you think so? Yeah, I feel like he likes the whole like. The element of, of dipping, oh. finding some refried beans. Because Jordan eats his uh, nachos with a knife and fork. No, I don't. What are you fucking... I've seen you do it twice. Oh, Bullsh- wow. Are you wow. seeing you do you it see me pick up Commodore nachos with the, with the goopy cheese? Interrogate him. Interrogate him, Quo. Get him. Yeah. Like, I've only seen you eat nachos twice, and both times hold on. you use You're, you're lying. Hold on. Hold on. Please Can respond. you object on my fucking I, behalf? I, I, please I respond in yes or no. I'm the judge here. I'm, not, I'm no longer your lawyer. I'm the judge. <laughs> Quo. 
I'm going to instruct Jordan to respond 100% with yes of the or no. Please now proceed with your questioning. Have you ever eaten nachos without a knife and fork around me? Yes. When? Like the same I time? I don't remember. Okay. Wow. Never, never well, a knife. Remember. No, no, you got to keep them answering questions. Yeah, never, like, a ni- never a knife, and you've seen me eat nachos with my hands in front of you. The same occasion that you also saw me finish a plate of nachos with a fork in front of you. Okay, I, now that I rest my case. Now that we've, <clears throat> yeah, but that's <clears throat> it's not a knife. You said knife and fork, so you're fucking lying. You're leading. Okay, and- okay, okay. You shut up too. Fuck judges, man. <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to go out like that dude in Atlanta when they Rick and Morty his, his episode. But was Dallas the worst place for Dumpy Doncic to land a Tex Mex haven at barbecue? What the fuck? Like those like Flintstones ribs, it's like flipping his car to it's the like, side. All right, he's got he's got one kryptonite. It's nachos. Tex-Mex. <laughs> Okay, we're sending him to Dallas. Like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's like I love hot dogs and pastrami. I'm going to New York, baby. There's, there's, a, there's a reason like the most famous barbecue place is called Dallas Barbecue. So that's where it all is. <laughs> he's like uh, a mashed potato kind of guy. Everything Brat. he eats is so healthy, except he's got a thing for old Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> and with the tenth pick, the Bucks select. <laughs> uh, the Democratic National Convention is going to be in Milwaukee. <clears throat> How does that affect the Bucks? Doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with not at all. Isn't the Stoned convention in... I thought it was Milwaukee, right? Am I getting that wrong? It's in Milwaukee, but I was saying the convention typically falls in like July. Yeah. So unless the Bucks are in the finals, it might well, still be over though. No, it'll, yeah, it'll it's still over, be over. It's over. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to stick with my answer is it doesn't. Okay. But how does it affect them vibe-wise? Oh, it also doesn't. Totally changes everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cory Booker's coming. I'm out. I'm not playing. Uh, swing men, swing state. Where are we going with this? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just throwing out words now. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to go see Captain Marvel in like five minutes. Is that one of those monster movies? For children? Yeah. <laughs> She's a space alien fighter pilot monster. Who's the nemesis? I don't know Is yet. I haven't monster? seen it. I just told you, I'm going to see Oh, it. I thought it was like a known nemesis, like Dr. Monster is... I read the comic them. book. It was like, it's aliens. It's aliens. Monster aliens. aliens. There you go. Oh, God, they're everywhere. I'm just, I'm just here for the D.H. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Fair enough. Wait, um, can well, I throw out a kink shaming, uh, a kinky uh, New York <laughs> Knicks um, scenario for the summer? Yeah. I think since they have a blank slate... They're the only team in the NBA with like a truly blank slate that they should you only Fisdale? They should only um uh sign and draft rangy wings. They should proceed with this progression like farther than anybody has currently. I think that sounds like regressive. Basketball. Oh, interesting. I think the three and D wing is useful, but like of the past. Oh that well, I think it's still in the future. I don't think we've seen peak, not three and D. But though. you still expect the Philadelphia 76ers to have a point guard, but then you want the Knicks to have only rangy wings. You need, uh, so you can have four rangy wings and then one just like marginal guard to dribble around and like play defense. That's fine. Then you have no shot creation. But those rangy wings would create those shots. But that's not just a rangy wing, right? I, I think you're no, saying no. you want you, you really want to go all towards the idea of positionless basketball. Yes. And you want basically... Not 3 and D, because that's, that's a okay, dual right, I, I, I hear you. I'm into that. I like, like a Middleton, like four Middletons. Really what you want is like a bunch of Iguodala's. Yeah, that would be amazing. Iguodala was like the I'm most... I'm dying! Jordan's asleep or dying or something. <laughs> oh. Did you eat a spider? No, I just swallowed. Those takes. <laughs> well, do you want to just lock him up? <laughs> <laughs> whoop whoop. Can you can you please arrest me and send me to the movies? Do you have anything else the, to say? The about children's your... movie? <laughs> yeah. Do you get a children's price for that? Yeah, I actually I put my shoes on my knees and I put on a big. I love that joke. That overcoat. joke is always funny. I just what like model in there. What was that comedian who did that with golf? What was his name? Adam Sandler. I mean, that was funny too. Anyway, how's the perfect pod? I think it it just became very chaotic, and it was the element of chaos was needed to to sort of give a part of perfection 
that is with that sense. I'll have like, you one know when you, yeah, what, in, and by through through explaining the perfection, you manage to make it not perfect, which is what I appreciate. What snacks are you gonna get? What snacks? What's your go-to? Um, no snacks today. I don't really have a go-to movie. That was a snack. great used, answer. Come it on. Used, it used to be red vines, but like I'm, I'm, oh, I'm cool. sugarless now. Uh, popcorn? Popcorn's in I your diet, right? With popcorn. It is. It's okay. My answer is popcorn because it's the only thing I will eat. I like cashews or uh, roast beef sandwiches at the movies because it's like unfurling it from the foil. That's cool. And just hearing the audible groan from everybody <laughs> else in the cinema. <laughs> the worst food to bring into a movie is Chinese food. It's oh. awful. It's fucking awful. Dude, so if you, can, if you can sneak a roast beef sandwich past security... And like the ticket, dude, it's well worth. It. I saw a woman bring in. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and see like the whatever the next bad movie is that I don't want to see. <laughs> this is what I would have done if movie pass still exists. Take a roast beef sandwich and just like put it under my seat and walk out, and just like just hide the and roast just beef, hide the roast beef, and just sort of or maybe hide in the corner. That's and what they see. call it in Australia, hide the roast oh, beef. Oh God, you're disgusting. And then just we'll, see we'll, how many people actually go looking for the sauce of the smell. And would you find the roast beef sandwich? Would you touch it? Would you throw it out? Or would you just also leave the cinema? Or would you eat it? Wow, also disgusting. I saw a woman bring in what appeared <laughs> to be Thai food one time, and she started... Oh, that's horrible. Maybe it was Chinese, because she started using chopsticks. Oh, and someone, the from, someone from the theater came in and was just like, no, you, you can't do this. Yeah. And I, I appreciated that, that they had spotted her and, and like shut down her whole... Chopstick eating fiasco. Yeah. I, oh, I think I feel triggered a little bit. She was not Asian, so oh, I feel better now. Yeah. Actually, my real my real go to snack just to end the perfect pod, string cheese. Oh, but you get all the cheesy things under your like uh, nails and stuff. No, you don't. Oh, you just eat it raw. Because I raw, <laughs> eat, it, eat it. What? Did you just <laughs> say you eat your cheese raw dog? <laughs> You're the one doing it. Uh, I didn't. I didn't drink cheese raw dogger over here. I didn't oh, know it's what Jordan the raw dog string cheese. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know what string cheese was for the longest time, and I discovered it. I was like, oh, of course, cool. like a little cheese stick handle. And then I thought it was string just because it was long and cylindrical. I didn't realize that you peeled it off. So I've never peeled it off. That is disgusting. That's like it had the best commercial. Remember, I'll take a pizza. Uh, hold the sauce. Like no sauce. It's like hold the hold the crust like no crust. It's like just the cheese, like a pizza with nothing. And that was like the whole thing. It was like the best part of the pizza, just the cheese. You too can raw dog string cheese. I get it. Raw dog and nothing. Another episode of Cookies in the Bag. Cookies. Cookies. <laughs>